state, which of you shall we say doth love us most? That we our largest bounty may extend the where nature doth with merit challenge? Goneril, our eldest born, you speak first. Ruby? Um, are we on scene three? No. Act one, scene one. Oh, I'm sorry. Line 54. Thank you. Sir, I love you more. Find it. I call that scene two. Sorry. I'm not used to this book. It only Lonnie just brought it today and I'm sorry. No excuses. Shakespeare didn't write that. <laughs> um. uh, is it Sir, I love you. You have King Lear, correct? Yes, but I, I'm not familiar with the book. But the, oh, here we go. I think I'm getting there. Sir, I love you. Okay. So, sorry. It's part that's of the. That's it, great. Sir, I love you more than word, word can wield the matter. Dearer than eyesight, space, and liberty, beyond what can be valued, rich or rare, no less than life with grace. Health, beauty, honor, as much as a child e'er loved, or father found, a love makes breath poor and speech unable, beyond all manner of wit, of so much I love you. Why shall Cordelia speak, love and be silent? From all these bounds, even from this line of thus, with shadowy forests and champagnes bridged, with plenteous rivers and wide skirted mead, we make thee lady. To thine end, to thine and Alb Albany's, uh, Albany's be this perpetual. What says our second daughter, our dearest Regan, the wife of Cornwall, speak? I am made of that self metal as my sister and prize me at her worth. In my true heart, I find she names my very word of deed. Only she comes too short, that I profess myself an enemy to all other joys, which the most precious square of sense pro processes, and find I am alone felicitate in your dear highness's love. Then poor Cordelia, and yet not so, since I'm sure my love's more richer than my tongue. To thee and thine hereditary ever remain the ample third of our fair kingdom. No less in space, validity, and pleasure that thus conferred on Goneril. Now, our joy, although our last and least, to who the young uh, vines of, of France and milk of Burgundy strive to be interest. Uh, sorry, light is not good here. What can you say that does to draw a third more opulent than your sisters? Speak. Nothing, my lord. Nothing? Nothing. Well, nothing will come of nothing. Speak again. Unhappily that I am, I cannot have. My heart into my mouth, my love, your majesty, according to my bond, no more no, nor less. How, how, Cordelia? <laughs> Mend your speech a little, lest you may mar your fortunes. Good, my lord, you have begot me, bred me, loved me. I return those duties back as are right fit, obey you, love you, and most honor you. Why have my sister's husbands, if they say they love you all, happily, when I shall wed, what lord whose hand must take my plight shall carry half my love with him, half my care and duty. 
shall, sure, I shall never marry like my sisters to love my father all. What goes to thy heart with this? A good, my lord. So young and so untender. So young, my lord, and true. Well, let it be so. Thy truth then be thy dower. For thy uh, sacred radiance of the sun, the mysteries of Hecate and the night, well, all the operations of the orbs from whence we do exist and cease to be, here I disclaim all my paternal care, property and property of blood, and as a nature stranger to my heart and me, hold thee from this, hold thee from this forever. The barbarous Scythian, or he that makes his generations mess uh, to gorse his, his appetite, shall to my bosom be well neighbored, pitied, and relieved, as thou my sometime daughter. Good, my liege. I... Peace can't come not between the dragon and his wreath, wrath. I loved her most, and thought to act my rear on, the, on her kind nursery. Hence, Cordelia, hence, and out and uh, avoid my sight. So be my grave, my peace, as here I give her father's heart from her. Call France, who stirs? Call Burgundy, Cornwall, and Albany. With my two daughters, Dowers, digest the third. Let pride, which she called plainness, marry her. I do invest you jointly with my power, proeminence, and with all the large effects our troop with majesty, our one se ourself, with monthly curse, with reservation as hundred knights, uh, by you and sustain shall our abode make with you by due turn. Only we shall retain the, the main uh, uh, name and all the addition to a king that sway. Revenue, the execution of the rest, beloved sons, be yours, which to confirm this cor coronet part between you. Royal Lear, whom I have ever honored as my king, loved as my father, as my master followed, as my great patron thought on in my prayers. Uh, the, the bow has been bent and drawn. Make from the shaft. Let it fall, rather. Though the fork be invade, fork invade the region of my heart. Be kent unmannerly when Lear is mad. What wouldst thou do, old man? Think'st thou that duty shall have dread to speak when power to flattery bows? To plainness honors bound when majesty falls to follow. Reserve thy state. And in thy best consideration, check this hideous rashness. Answer my life, my judgment. Thy youngest daughter does not love thee least, nor are those empty-hearted whose love, whose low sound reverbs no hollowness. Kent, on thy life, no more. My life I never held but as a pawn to wage war against thy enemies, nor fear to lose it, thy safety being motive. Out of my sight. See better, Lear. And let me still remain the true blank of thine eye. Now by Apollo. Now by Apollo, king, thou swearest thy gods in vain. O oh, vassal, miscreant. Do kill thy physician, <laughs> and the fee bestow upon thy foul disease. Revoke thy gift, or whilst I can vent clamor from my throat, I'll tell thee, thou dost evil. Hear me. Recreant, on thine allegiance, hear me. This thou hast sought to make us break our, our vow, which we durst never yet, and with strained uh, pride to come betwixt our sentence and our peace and our power, uh, which our new, which not our nature, not our places can bear. Our potency make good, take the reward. Five days we do allot thee for possession uh, to be shielded from thee, shield thee from the disasters of the world. 
and on the next to turn thy hated look back upon our kingdom. If on the tenth day following thy banished trunk be found in our dominion, the moment is thy death. Away, by Jupiter, this shall not be cooked, revoked. Fare thee well, king. Sith thus thou wilt appear, freedom lives hence, and banishment is here. The gods to their dear shelter take thee, maid, that justly thinks to thou hast most rightly said. In your large speech, O oh, princes, did you all adieu? He'll shape his old course in a country new. Here's France and Burgundy, my noble lord. Oh, my lord of Burgundy, we uh, first address toward you, who with this king hath rivaled for our daughters. What in the, in the least will you require uh, in present dower with her, or cease your quest of love? Most royal majesty, I crave no more than what your highness offered, nor will I tender less. Ah, right noble Burgundy, when she was dear to us, we did hold her so, but now her price is fallen. Sir, there she stands, there she stands, if aught within that little uh, seeming substance, or all of it, with our displeasure peace, then nothing more may fitly take your, your grace. She's there, and she is yours. I know no answer. Will you, with these infirmities she owes, unintended, now uh, new adopted to, to our ha ha hate, dowered with our curse and stranded with our oaths, take her or leave her. Uh, pardon me, royal sir. Election makes not up on such occasions. Then leave her, sir. For by the power that made me, I will tell you, I will, I tell you all her wealth. For you, good king, I would not from your your love make such a stray sorry, this look I screws for such a stray to match you where I hate. Therefore, beseech you avert your liking. Sorry, fifty seven. Oh yeah, okay. So search your liking. Sorry. If it is a more worthier way, worthier way than uh, on our credit, there with nature is ashamed, almost to acknowledge hers. This is most strange that she, that even but now was your best object, the argument of your praise, all of your age. Most best, most dearest, should in Christ of time permit a thing so monstrous to dismantle so many folds of favor. Sure, her offense must be of such unnatural degree that monsters it, or your forevouched affection falleth into taint, which to believe of her must be a faith that reason without miracle could never plant in me. I yet beseech your majesty, if for I want that glib and oily art to speak and purpose not, since what I well intend, I'll dot before I speak that you make known it is no vicious blood, murder, or foulness, no unchaste action, or dishonored step that hath deprived me of your grace and favor, but even for want of what that for which I am richer, a still soliciting eye and such a tongue as I am glad I have not, though not to have, have it hath lost me, 
in your liking. Uh, better thou hadst not been born than not uh, to have pleased the, the, the better. It, is it but this a tardiness in nature that mm -hmm. often leaves the history unspoke that it intends to do? My Lord of Burgundy, what say you to the lady? Loves not love when it is mingled with regrets that stand aloof from the entire point. Will you have her? She is herself a dowry. Uh, Royal Slear, but give me that portion which yourself proposed, and here I take Cordelia by the hand, Duchess of Burgundy. Nothing. I have sworn. I am firm. I'm sorry, then. You have so lost a father that you must lose a husband. Peace be with you, Burgundy, since that respect of fortune are his love. I shall not be his wife. First, Cordelia, that art most rich being poor, most choice forsaken, and most loved despised thee and thy virtues here I seize upon. Be it lawful, I take up what is cast away. But, God, tis stranger that from the coast neglect my love should kindle to inflamed respect. Thy dowerless daughter, king, thrown to my chance, is queen of us, of ours, of our fair France. Not all the dukes of waters burgundy can buy this unprized precious maid of me. Bid them farewell, Cordelia. Although though unkind, thou losest here a better where to find. Thou hast her, France. Let her be there. Um, not, uh, let her be thine. We have no such uh, daughter. We shall never see that face of hers again. Therefore, be gone. Without our grace, our love, and our ben benison, uh, cause no come, noble Burgundy. To your sister, oh, the jewels, the jewels of our father with washed eyes. Cordelia leaves you. I know you what you are, and like a sister, am most most loath to call your father your faults, and they are named. Love well our father to your professed bosoms. I commit him, but yet alas, stood I within his grace. I would prefer him to be a better place. So farewell to you both. Reagan. Leilani, you have a line. I'm sorry, I was muted. Okay. <laughs> Prescribe not us our duties. Be to content your Lord, who hath received you at fortune's alms. You have obedience scanted, and well are worth the one you have wanted. Time, Time shall unfold, unfold what plighted cunning heights who cover faults at last shame them derides well may you prosper come fair cordelia it is not little i have to say of what most nearly appertains to us both i think our father will hence tonight that's most certain and with you next month with us you see how full of changes his age is? Observation we have made of it hath not been little. He always loved our sister most, and what poor judgment he hath now cast her off appears cheap. Tis the infirmity of his age, yet he hath ever but slenderly known himself. The best and soundest of his time hath been but rash. Then we must look his age to receive not alone the imperfections of long and graft condition, but there with, with withal the 
the unruly waywardness that infirm and tolerant peers bring with them. Such inconstant stars are like we are we like to have from him as this of Kent's banishment? There is further compliment of leave taking between France and him. Pray you, let us sit together. Our father carry authority with such disposition as he bears. Last surrender of his will, but offend us. We shall further think on it. We must do something. And heat. Scene two, Edmund with a letter. Thou, nature, art my goddess. To thy law my services are bound. Wherefore should I stand in the plague of custom and permit the cur curiosity of nations to de deprive me? Uh, for that I am some twelve or fourteen moonshines lag of a brother. Why bastard? Wherefore base? When my dim dimensions are as well compact, my mind is generous and my shape is true as honest madam's issue. Why brand they us with base, with baseness, bastardy? Base, base, who in the lusty stealth of nature take more composition and fierce quality than doth within a dull state, tired bed, go in the creating a whole tribe of flops. Ah, uh, uh, got between sleep and wake. Well then, legitimate, Edgar. I must have your land. Our father's love is to the bastard Edmund as to the legitimate, fine word legitimate. <laughs> Will my legitimate, if this letter speed, and if this invention thrive, Edmund the base shall up the legitimate. I know, I grow. Now, God, stand up for bastards. Um. You? Yeah, I'm back with the unmute. Kent banished thus, and France in collar parted? The king gone tonight. Subscribe his power, confined to exhibition, all this done upon the gad. Edmund, how now? What news? So please, your worship, uh, none. Why so earnestly you seek to put up that letter? I, I know no news, my lord. What paper uh, were you reading? Well, it's, uh, uh, well, nothing, my lord. <laughs> no? What in not needed then that terrible dispatch it into your pocket? The quality of nothing hath not such need to hide itself. Let's see. Come, if it be nothing, I shall not be respectable. I beseech you, uh, uh, sir, pardon me. It is a letter uh, from my brother <laughs> that I have not all or read, or for so much as I have perused, I find it not fit for your oar looking. Give me the letter, sir. Oh, I, well, I shall offend either to detain or give it. The contents is as in part to, that I understand them, are to blame. Let's see, let's see. I hope for my brother's justification, he wrote this but as an essay uh, or taste of our virtue. <laughs> I'll see. This yes. policy and reverence of age makes the world bitter to the rest of our times, keeps our fortunes from us till our oldness cannot relish them. I begin to find an idle and fond bondage in the oppression of aged tyranny. 
who sways, not as it hath power, but it ha as it has suffered. Come to me, of this I may speak more. If our father would sleep till I waked him, you should half his revenue forever and live the beloved of your brother, Edgar. Hmm. Conspiracy. Sleep till I waked him? You should enjoy half his revenue? My son, Edgar. He had a hand to write in this, a heart and brain to breed in it. When came you to this? Who brought it? Uh, it was not brought me, my lord. There's a cunning of it. I, I found it thrown in at the casement of my closet. <laughs> you know the character to be your brother's? Uh, it, if the matter were good, my lord, uh, I just swear it, was, it were his. Uh, but in respect of that, I would fain think that it were not. It is his. It, it is his hand, my lord, uh, but I hope his heart is not in the contents. Hath he never heretofore sounded you in this business? Never, my lord, uh, but I have heard him oft maintain it to be fit that sons of perfect age and fathers declining the father should be as ward to the son, and the son manage his revenue. Oh, villain, villain! His very opinion in this letter, abhorred villain, unnatural, tested, brutish villain, worse than brutish. Go, Sirrah, seek him. I'll apprehend him, abominable villain. Where is he? Oh, I do not know, uh, my lord. Uh, if it shall please you to suspend your indignation against my brother till he can derive from him better testimony of his intent, you shall run a certain course uh, um, where if you violently proceed against him, mistaking his purpose, it would make a great gap in your honor and shake it in pieces the heart of this, of his obedience. I dare pawn down my life for him that he hath wrote this to feel my affection to your honor and to no further pretense of danger. Think you so? If your honor judge it meet, I will place you where you shall hear us confer of this, and by an auricular assurance, have your satisfaction, and that without any further delay than this very evening. He cannot be such a monster. Nor is not sure. To his father that so tenderly and entirely loves him. Heaven and earth, Edmund, seek him out. Why, wind him into me, him. Wind me into him. I pray you, frame the business after your own wisdom. I would understate myself to be in a due resolution. I will seek him, sir. Uh, presently, uh, convey the business that I have found means and acquaint you with all. These late eclipses in the sun and moon portend no good to us. For the wisdom of nature can reason it thus and thus. Yet nature finds itself scourged by the sequent effects. Love cools, friendship falls off, brothers divide in cities mutinies, in countries, discord, in palaces, treason, and the bond cracked twixt son and father. This villain of mine comes under the prediction, there's not, there's son against father. The king falls from bias of nature. There's father against child. Where we have seen the best of our time, machinations, hollowness, treachery, and all ruinous disorders. Follow us discordantly to our graves. Find out this villain, Edmund, and shall lose thee nothing to do it carefully. 
and the noble and true-hearted Kent banished. This offense, honesty, tis strange. Uh, goodbye. Oh, this is excellent foppery of the world. Uh, when we are sick in fortune, often the surfeit of our own behavior, we make guilty of our disasters, the sun, the moon, and the stars, as if we were villains by necessity, fools by heavenly compulsion, knaves, thieves, and treacheres. Uh, Spirit, by spherical predominance, drunkards, liars, and adulterers, by an enforced uh, obedience of planetary influence, and all that we are evil in, by a divine thrusting, by a divine thrusting on an admirable evasion of a whoremaster man to lay his goatish disposition to the charge of a star. <laughs> my father compounded with my mother under the dragon's tail, and my nativity was under Ursa Major. So that it follows, I am rough and lecherous. Tut, I should have been that I am, that the maidenliest star in the firmament twinkled on my bastarding. <laughs> Edgar. <laughs> Edgar. Oh. Um, is that my line? No, it's your line still, right? And Patty comes like the catastrophe of the old comedy. My cue is villainous melancholy, with a sigh like Tom of Bedlam. All oh, these eclipses do portend their divisions. Ah, so long me. <laughs> oh, no. Brother Edmund, what serious contemplation are you in? I'm thinking, brother, of a prediction that I read the other day. Oh. What should follow these eclipses? You busy yourself with that? I promise you, the effects he writes of succeed unhappily and of unnatural, unnaturalness, unnaturalness between the child and the parent, death, dearth, a dissolution of ancient amnities, divisions in state, menaces and maledictions against the king and nobles, needless diffidences, banishment of friends, and, and dissipation of cohorts, nuptial breaches, and I know not what. How long have you been a secretary of the Western Mama? Oh, come, come. Uh, when saw you my father last? Who might go by? I speak you with him? Aye, right. two hours together. Well, parted you in good terms. I found you so no displeasure in him by word or countenance. Not at all. I'll bethink yourself wherein you have offended him, and that my entreaty forbear his presence till some little time hath qualified the heat of his displeasure. When at this in instant so rageous in him that with the mischief of your person it would scarcely allay. Some villain has done me wrong. That's my fear, I pray you. Uh, give a continent forbearance till the spide of his rage goes slower. And as I said, retire with me to my lodging, uh, from whence I will fitly bring you to hear my Lord speak. I pray you, go, here's my key, and uh, if you stir abroad, go armed. Um, brother? brother, I advise you to the best, go armed. I am no honest man, if there be no good meaning toward you. I have told you what I have seen and heard, but faintly, 
and nothing like the image and horror of it. Pray you, away! Shall I hear from you along? I do serve you in this business. <laughs> uh, credulous father, and a brother noble, whose nature is so far from doing harms that he suspects none, <laughs> and on whose the foolish honesty, my practices ride easy. I see the business. Let me, if not by birth, and uh, have lands by wit, all with me's meat that I can fashion fit. <laughs> Dean three. My father Albany's palace. Did my father strike my gentleman for chiding of his fool? Aye, madam. By day and night he wrongs me. Every hour he flashes into one gross crime or another that sets all at odds. I'll not endure it. His nights grow brightest and himself upbraids us. On every strike, when he returns from hunting, I will not speak to him. Say, I am sick. If you come slack former services, you shall do well. The fault of it, I'll answer. He's coming, madam. I hear him. Put on what weary negligence you please, you and your fellows. I'd have it come to question. If he distaste it, then him to my sister whose mind and mine I know that are one, not to be ruled, overruled, idle old man that still would manage those authorities that he hath given away. Now, by my life, old fools are babes again and must be used with checks as flatteries when they are seen abused. Re remember what I have said. No, madam. And let the knights have colder looks among you. What grows of it, no matter. Advise your fellows so. I would grieve the pen's occasions. I shall, that I may speak, I will write straight to my sister and hold every course. Prepare for dinner. And then in another hall, Kent is disguised. But as well I other accents borrow that can my speech diffuse, my good intent may carry through itself to that full issue which I raised my likeness. Now, banished Kent, if thou canst serve, for thou dost stand condemned, so may it come thy master, whom thou lovest, shall find thee full of labors. Let me not stay a jot for dinner. Go get it ready. How now? What art thou? Man, sir. <laughs> what dost thou profess? What wouldst thou with us? I do profess to be no less than I seem, to serve him truly that will put me to trust, to love him that is honest, to converse with him that is wise and say little, to fear judgment, to fight when I cannot choose, and to eat no fish. What art thou? A very honest-hearted fellow, and as poor as the king. Well, if thou be as poor as the subject as he is for the king, then thou art poor enough. What wouldst thou? Service. Ah, uh, who wouldst thou serve? You. Dost thou know me, fellow? No, sir. But you have that in your countenance, which I would fain call master. Oh, uh, what's that? Authority. What services canst thou do? I can keep honest counsel, ride, run, mar uh -huh. a curious tale in telling it, and deliver a plain message bluntly. Okay. That which ordinary men are fit for, I'm qualified in, and the best of all me is diligence. How old art thou? Well, not so young, sir, to love a woman for singing, nor so old to dote on her for anything. I've years on my back, 48. Oh, 
follow me. Thou shalt serve me. If I like thee, no worse thou after dinner. I will not part from thee yet. Dinner ho, dinner. Where's my knave, my fool? Go you and, and call my fool hither. You, you, sirrah, where's my daughter? So you. What's says the fellow there? Call the clot pole back. <laughs> where's the my where's my fool? Oh, I think the world's asleep. How now? Where's that mongrel? Well, no. Says my lord, he your says, daughter is my not lord, your okay. daughter is not well. Well, why came not the slave back to me when I called him? Sir, he answered me in the roundest manner. He would not. He would not? My lord, I know now what the matter is, but to my judgment, your highness is not entertained with the ceremonious affection as you were wont. There is a great abate, abatement of kindness appears as well in the general dependence as in the duke himself also and your daughter. Ah, sayest thou so? I beseech you, pardon me, my lord, if I be mistaken, for my duty cannot be silent when I think your highness wronged. Oh, but rememberest me of mine own uh, conception that I have perceived a most faint neglect of, of late, which I have rather blamed as, as mine, mine own jealous cru curiosity than in the very presence and purpose of kindness. I will look further into it, but where's my fool? I have not seen him since these two days. Since my young lady is going into France, sir, the fool hath much pined away. No more of that, I have noted it well. Go you and tell my daughter I would speak with her. Uh, go you, uh, call hither my fool. Oh, you, sir. Come you hither, sir. Who am I, sir? My lady's father. My lady's father? My lord's knave, you horse and dog, you sleeve, you cut, you cur. I am none of these, my lord. I beseech your pardon. Do you bandy looks with me, you rascal? I'll not be struck, my lord. Not stripped, neither. You have some base football player. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry, not my line. Mm -hmm. I thank thee, fellow. Thou service me, and I'll love thee. Mr. Kent. Oh, come on, sir. Ar arise away. I'll teach you differences. Away, away, if you will measure your lover's length against Harry. But away, go to. Have you wisdom? So. Uh, now, my friendly knave, I apologize for stealing your line, and I thank thee. Here's the earnest of thy service. Well, let me hear I am too. Here's my coxcomb. Oh, now, my pretty knave, how dost thou? Ah, sirrah, you were best to take my coxcomb. <laughs> Why, my boy? Ah, you for to for taking one's part that's out of favor, nay, and thou canst not smile as the wind sits, thou'll catch cold shortly. <laughs> there, take my coxcomb. Why, this fellow has banished you and two's, uh, two aunt's daughters, and the, did the third a blessing against his will. If thou follow him, Thou must wear my coxcomb. Uh, how now, uncle? Would I had two coxcomb and two daughters? Why, my boy? If I gave them all my living, I'll keep my coxcomb myself. There's mine, and beg another of thy daughters. Uh, take heed, sir, uh, the whip. Uh, truce a dog must, must a kennel. 
and he must be whipped out when Lady the Brack may stand by the fire and stink. A pestilent gall to me. Sarah, I'll teach thee a speech. Do. Ah. Market, uncle, have the more than thou showest, speak less than thou knowest, lend less than thou owest, ride more with thou goest, and learn more that thou trowest, and set less than thou throwest, and leave thy drink and thy whore, and keep in the door, and thou shalt have more than two tens to a score. <laughs> This is nothing, fool. <laughs> then, tis like the breath of an unfeed lawyer. You gave me nothing for it. And can you make no news, no use of nothing, young uncle? <laughs> Why, no, boy. Nothing can be made out of nothing. Really, tell him. So much the rent of his land comes to, and he will not believe a fool. A bitter fool. Uh, dost thou know the difference, my boy, between a bitter fool and a sweet fool? Uh, no, lad, teach me. That lord which counseled thee to give away thy land, come place with him here by me, do thou for him stand. The sweet and hither fool will presently appear, and one in Motley here, the other found out there. Where am I? This, this copy doesn't have that line. Ah. Dost thou hear call me fool? Dost thou? No, it goes, you know, teach me what found shall, shall be. And then fool says, why after I have cut the egg in the middle? Ah. Ah. I have an old script, obviously. Well, this is uh, this is the RSC version. <laughs> That's why. I'm not saying okay. either one is correct. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Okay. Sorry. Apologize, but. Uh, so so, you, so got... you want you want me to read Lear, you know, until you're back on track? Then? I can't hear. What? No, should, I read, should I read um, a Lear until? Uh, we're back on a place where he has the line. Um, no, you're, you're fading. I didn't get it. I'm sorry. Um, Why I don't can you read go ahead? Lear. I can read Lear until uh, we're back on the section that you have in your book. Here. It's, um, Why don't you go ahead, uh, Peter, and give yeah. me what line is and I'll follow. Okay, well I'm at line 115, the fool who's talking. Okay, and that words are? Why after I have cut the egg in the middle and eat uh, up the meat. There it is, okay. Um, let's see. No faith, lords and great men will not let me. If I had a monopoly out, they would not have part on it. And uh, ladies too, they would not have, ha have, they would not let me have all fooled to myself. They'll be uh, snatching. Give me an egg, uncle, and I'll give thee two crowns. What two crowns shall they be? Why, after I have cut the egg in the middle and eat up the meat, two crowns of the egg, when thou clovest thy crown in the middle okay. and gavest away to both parts, thou borest thy ass on thy back or the dirt, and thou hadst little wit with the bald crown, when thou gavest thy golden one away. If I speak like myself in this, let him be whipped that first finds it so. Fools that learn less wit in a year, for wise men grow foppish. They know not what their wits to wear. Their manners are so oppish. When, 
Whenever you want to be so full of songs, Sarah. I have to use it, Uncle, ever since thou madest thy daughters thy mothers. <laughs> For when thou gavest them the rod and puts down thine own breeches, then they said, Joy may weep, and I for sorrow sung. For such a king must play bo peep and go the fools among. Prithee, uncle, keep a schoolmaster that can teach thy fool to lie. I would fain learn to lie. And you lie, sir. I will have you whipped. Oh, I marvel that uh, what Ken thou and thy daughters are. They'll have me whip for speaking true, and thou have me whip for lying. And sometimes I am whipped for holding my peace. <laughs> I had rather be any kind of thing than a fool, and yet I would not be thee, Uncle. Thou hast pared thy wit on both sides and left nothing in the middle. Here comes one of the pairings. Ah, how now, daughter? What makes that that, uh, that frontlet on? You are too much of you are too much of late in the frown. Thou, uh, thou wast a pretty fellow when thou had no need to care for her frowning. Now thou art like an O without a figure. I am better than thou art now. I am a fool, and thou art nothing. Oh, yes, for forsooth, I will hold my tongue, so your face bids me, uh, though you say nothing. Mum, mum, he will keep no crest or crumb, and weary of all shall want some. Uh, that's a shield, peace God. Uh. Uh, yeah. Is this your Ruby? Call? Yes. Ruby? Yes. Not only, sir. Not only, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Not only, sir, is your all licensed fool, but other of your insolent retinue, who hourly part quarrel, breaking forth in rank. Enough to be in board riots, sir. I have thought by making this well known unto you to have found a safe redress, but now grow fearful. But what yourself too late have spoken and done, if you protect this court and put it on but your allowance, what if you should the fault would not escape the censure nor the redress of sleep, which is the tender of a home that's wholesome wheel might in their in their working do you that offense which else for shame then that the necessity will call discreet proceeding and for you trial uncle the hedge sparrow fed the cuckoo so long that it is ha has its head bit off by its young. <laughs> so out went the candle, and we were left darkling. Are you our daughter? I would you make use of your good wisdom, whereof I know you are fraught and put away. Those dispositions which of late transport you, what you rightly are. May not an ass know when the cart draws the horse. <laughs> Whoop jug, I love thee. <laughs> Does any here one here know me? This is not Lear. Does Lear walk thus, speak thus? Where are his eyes? Either his notion weakens, his discernings are lethargy. Ha! Waking? Tis not so. Who is it that can tell me who I am? Lear's shadow. Your name, fair gentlewoman? Oh dear. This admiration? I would learn that. I would learn that, for by the marks of sovereignty, knowledge, and reason, I should be false persuaded I had thought it. Which they will make an obedient father. 
Your name, the gentlewoman? Admiration, sir, is much of savor of other your new pranks. I do beseech you to understand my purposes aright, as you are old and reverend, should be wise. How do you keep a hundred knights and squires, men so disordered, so despotched and calm, that this our court, infected with their manners, shows like a riotous inn, epicurism and lust, makes it more like a tavern or a brothel than a graced palace. The shame itself doth speak for instant remedy, but then desire by her that else will take the thing she begs a little to this quantity your train and the remainders it shall still depend to be such men as may be sort your age which know themselves and the you. Back, Peter. Darkness and devils. Saddle my horses. Call my train together, degenerate bastard. I'll not trouble thee. Yet have I left a daughter. Strike my people and your disordered rabble. Exert their betters. Woe that too, too late repented. Is it your will? Speak, sir. Prepare my horses. In gratitude, thou marble-hearted fiend. More hideous when thou showest me thee in a child than the sea monster. Pray, sir, be patient. <laughs> Detested kite, thou liest. My train are men of choice and rare parts, that all particulars of duty know and in the most exact regard support um, the worships of their name. O oh, meet, uh, O oh, most small fault, how ugly didst thou in Cordelia's show, which, like an engine, wretched my fame, frame of nature, from the fixed place, drew from my heart all love, and added to the gall. O oh, Lear, Lear, Lear! Beat at this gate that thou dost with folly in, and thy dear judgment out. Go, go, my people. And my lord, I am guiltless, as I am ignorant of what you have moved you. Well, it, it may be so, my lord. Here, nature, here, dear goddess, here. Suspend thy purpose if thou didst intend to make this creature fruitful into her womb, convey sterility. Dry up all in dry up in her all organs of increase and from her derog derogate body never spring a babe of honor in her if she must team create her child of spleen that it may live and be a thwart disnatured torment to her let it stamp wrinkles in her brow of youth with cadent tears fret channels in her cheeks Turn all her mother's pains and benefits to laughter and contempt, that she may feel how sharpest from a serpent's tooth it is to have a thankless child. Away! Away! Now, gods that we adore, whereof comes this? Never afflict yourself to know more of it, but let this his disposition have the scope as dotage gives it. What? Fifty thousand, fifty of my followers at a clap within a fortnight. What's the matter, sir? Well, I'll tell thee. Life and death. I am ashamed that thou dost hast power to shake my manhood thus. That these hot tears, which break from me perforce, should make thee worth them. Blossoms and fogs upon thee. The intended wounding of a father's curse. Uh, Pierce every sense of, about thee. Old fond eyes, beweep this cause again. I'll pluck thee out and cast thee but with the waters that ye loose to temper clay. Ha! Huh? Let it be so. I have another daughter who, I am sure, is kind and comfortable. When she shall hear of this, this of thee with her nails, she'll flay thy wolfish visage. Thou shalt find that I will assume the shape which thou dost think 
I have cast off forever. Martha? I cannot be so partial, Goneril, to the great love that I bear you. Pray you. Pretend. Oh, Oswald. Oh, you, sir. Or name than fool after your master. Nuncle near, Nuncle Lear, tarry and take the fool with thee. A fox, when one is caught her, and such a daughter should care to do slaughter. If my cap would buy a halter, so the fool would follow after. A good counsel, a hundred knights, tis politic and safe to let them keep. At, at point, a hundred knights, yes, that on every dream, each buzz, each fancy, each complaint, just like he may on guard his dotage with their powers and hold our lives in mercy. Oswald, I say. Well, you may fear too far. Secret and trust too far. Let me still take away the harms I fear. Not fear, still to be taken. I know his heart. What he had uttered, uttered. I have writ my sister. If she sustain him and his hundred knights, what I have showed the unfitness. What have you writ this letter to my sister? I, madam. Take you some company away to horse. Inform her full of my particular fear, and thereto add such reasons of her own as may compact it more. You get you gone, and ha hasten your return. No, no, my lord, these milky gentlemen, gentleness and course of yours, though I condemn not, yet under pardon, you are much more at task for want of wisdom than praise for harmful mildness. How far your eyes may pierce, I cannot tell, and striving to better, off we mar what's well. Nay, well, well, the event.